Today we're going to take a look at one of the most feature-rich Thunderbolt 3 docks on the market, the TS3 Plus from CalDigit. I recently decided to get a proper Thunderbolt dock for my MacBook Pro instead of using multiple USB-C dongles. I looked into all the major options on the market and the CalDigit came out a clear winner. In addition to the large selection of ports which we'll take a look at shortly, the TS3 Plus also supports full 85W charging whereas many other docks only support up to 60 watts. It also contains an SD card reader, which many other docks, including the £300 Belkin sold in the Apple Store, lack. When buying docks, it's important to note the difference between a Thunderbolt 3 dock and a USB-C dock. While a Thunderbolt 3 dock uses a USB-C connector, it connects to the host machine over the Thunderbolt protocol, which provides significantly more bandwidth. It also means that the peripherals in the dock, such as Ethernet, are carried over PCI Express, rather than effectively being USB to Ethernet adapters connected to a USB hub. Price-wise, while not particularly cheap, the TS3 Plus is very competitive against other Thunderbolt 3 docks. At the time of filming, the TS3 Plus starts at £255 directly from the CalDigit store. You can however save a fair bit by buying one of their certified refurbished models if they're available. The model I picked up here was a refurbished unit and cost £220, which is a pretty decent saving. It's also available on Amazon, but it's significantly more expensive, so it's probably best to buy it directly from CalDigit. So now let's take a look at the TS3 Plus and see what you get in the box. So here's the box here. It's fairly sort of plain retail packaging really. Just shows pictures of the device and lists the features along the bottom. The features it lists are 15 ports, which we'll take a look at what they are later, gigabit ethernet, digital optical audio, device charging, 85 watt laptop charging capacity, dual Thunderbolt 3 ports, the UHS-2 card reader, so we'll try that out later. That's a very high speed SD card reader and aluminium construction, which I initially thought when I saw that was AI and I'm going to claim that somehow I had AI as a buzzword, but no, it's just aluminium construction. So that's it there. That side shows the ports, but we'll take a look at the actual device itself. So now let's get inside and see what we get. So if we open it up, you'll see the first thing we get is just a card that just states to only use certified CalDigit cables and about updating Windows devices if you want to use it with Windows. You don't really have to use a CalDigit cable, you could use any Thunderbolt 3 cable. However, it's important to bear in mind there's a difference between a Thunderbolt 3 cable and a USB-C cable, because while they've got the same connectors on the end, a Thunderbolt 3 cable needs to meet much higher standards. So if you want to use a different cable with this, you'd have to make sure it's definitely a Thunderbolt 3 cable and not just a boring USB-C cable. Next up we get the included cable, which is the Thunderbolt 3 cable. This is only half a metre. You pay more for the device if you want it to come with a longer cable. However, the refurb ones only come with a half meter cable. You can, of course, buy a longer cable later if you needed one. Next up, we get a power cable, so that's the standard IEC power connector. I can add that to my collection of hundreds of these things. We get standard IEC lead. This looks like, okay, that's some sort of feet. So what you can do is you can put that on the device so it will stand up vertically, or if you want to lay it horizontally, you can put these rubber sort of feet on it to stop it sliding about. And what looks quite nice actually is they seem to clip over the heatsink fins rather than sticking on with adhesive. So that's quite nice. So they should be able to go on and come off really easily and they shouldn't like leave residue or fall off on their own. So that'll be, that's quite a nice design. The final accessory we get is a power brick, which is really heavy. That is huge. Um, and that goes to a big barrel jack there and takes the IEC connector in there, which is good. So it's actually properly grounded. So you won't get that weird tingling thing off the MacBook, hopefully that you can get with some ungrounded chargers. It's a proper grounded power brick. And we can see the spec there. It's made by CalDigit themselves, or at least branded by them. It'll be made by someone else. And it's 20 volts, 9 amps. So that's a 180 watt power brick. So that's huge. So it charges the laptop at 85 watts, but the brick itself is 190 watts, or sorry, 180 watts. So that's really good sort of extra headroom capacity. So that means there's loads of capacity there for powering the dock itself, powering USB accessories, powering other Thunderbolt devices that are connected. So you're not like running like at a marginal power level. There's a huge amount of power available for this with this 180 watt power brick. Now finally we should have the dock hopefully. So fold that out. And yep, we've got the dock here. So this is obviously a refurb model. So it might have some cosmetic imperfections. I'm not sure. Hopefully nothing too major. But we've got the dock in the bag. So let's take it out. So that's the dock. It's quite nice and compact. It's got a fair bit of weight to it, but it's not too bad. I am noticing there's some slight cosmetic blemishes in the front there, there's like a little scuff almost. 
It might just be dirt, it might come, actually yeah that just rubs off, okay that's not a big problem. There's maybe a slight mark there but it's, it's mostly rubbed off so it's not too bad. I'll maybe get a good clean. So yeah that's the dock there, so what I'll now do is I'll go in and take a look at it. So now here we have the TS3 Plus itself, and as you can see I went for the Space Grey model. It's also available in silver, however I went for Space Grey just because it matches my machine. And it looks a lot better in real life than it did on their website. Their website looks, made it look quite dark, but it actually looks fairly reasonable. It matches the colour of the machine quite closely. So on the front of the unit we've got the SD card reader, headphone output, microphone input, and then a pair of USB ports. These are 5 gigabit USB 3, and you've got a Type-A and a Type-C port, so you've got both there if you wanted them. There's also a single LED up here. One thing that's quite interesting with this is it has, has separate headphone and microphone jacks, whereas a lot of the docks use a combined one for a headset. This is good if you want to use an external microphone and separate speakers, you don't need a splitter for that. However, if you wanted to use, say, headphones with a built-in microphone, you wouldn't be able to connect it directly into this. However, that's not really a big deal because the machine itself has a combined port, so if I wanted to use a headset, I just plug it straight into the laptop, and if I want to use separate ones, I can plug them into this. So it's quite nice having them separate because it gives you that flexibility. On the top you've just got these nice sort of fins all around the outside and on the bottom there's a nice sort of anti-slip rubber foot which is quite good so that'll hopefully keep it steady when it's standing up. Around the rear we have the I.O. So we can see what we have here is it's, oh, it's upside down, that's the right way up. So left to right we've got the power jack so that's where the barrel jack connects from the charger. We've got gigabit ethernet here which has built in LEDs so that's nice to see, I'll hopefully get status LEDs out of it if it's you know using the machine sending network traffic. We've then got optical audio out, USB, USB C 10 gigabits, so that's USB 3.1 10 gigabit, which is quite nice. That's a feature that the TS3 Plus have, has that the TS3 doesn't. I mean, the machine has that as well, but it is nice seeing that on the dock if you want to connect a really fast external hard drive or SSD. You've then got four USB 3 5 gigabit ports, which is really useful, so you can connect all your peripherals to that. You've then got a full size display port and a pair of Thunderbolt 3 ports. The one on the right labelled computer, that will connect to the laptop itself and will provide power to the computer. The second port here is a pass-through, so you can use that to connect either additional Thunderbolt devices or you can connect up a monitor to this. This is what you would use if you wanted to connect a 5K monitor or if you want to connect a second monitor in addition to the display port connector. One minor complaint is that the only analogue audio output on this is on the front of the dock, and this is fairly common for most Thunderbolt docks. This is ideal for headphone users because they can plug it straight into the front of the dock without having to reach around the back. However, for me, I use speakers, and they're not fancy USB speakers or optical inputs or anything like that. They're just basic Bose Companion 2 speakers that require an analog input. This means that when I connect mine up, the cable's going to have to trail around from the back of the dock and then plug into the front, which is a bit, un bit unsightly, but it'll do. Ultimately, I could find a way around it, either by getting a USB or optical DAC, or by getting USB speakers or something like that, but for now I'll just have to deal with the cable trailing around the front. It would have been quite nice if I had a connection on the back for speakers, and then when you plugged headphones into the front it would shut the speakers off, or something like that, like a PC would do, so it's a bit of a shame not having it, but I'm sure I'll manage. For me, connecting monitors to something like this is quite tricky. If you've got modern monitors that just take DisplayPort or one of the new LG Ultrafine that takes Thunderbolt 3 itself, you're fine, you just plug it straight in, or use a cheap passive adapter. My difficulty is that my monitors are quite old. They're really nice monitors, they're 1440p resolution which is really good, but because of their age they only take DVI inputs. The difficulty with that is that 1440p you have to use dual link DVI, not the more basic and more common single link. That means that cheap adapters such as this one here, that go from mini display port to DVI, don't actually work. These are you know, the ones that cost maybe 5 to 20 quid. They won't work with my monitors because even though it's got a dual link connector, it's only a single link output. So you need to use a much more expensive adapter. I picked up this one here from Amazon which claims that it's dual link, so it says dual link active there, and even on the tag it states that it supports 2560 by 1440, but it actually doesn't. It passes the resolution through to the laptop and the laptop sees it as being a 1440p monitor, but as soon as you switch it on it just starts flickering on and off, it won't work. So I think this one technically does work as dual link, but it's so marginal it's really unreliable. So I'll have to send this one back. So in the end I gave up and I'm now going to use some really expensive adapters to, just to ensure it works. So the first adapter I'm using is this one here, which I've had for a couple of years now. I bought this back when I had a graphics card that only had a single DVI output. And this is a monoprice adapter. 
and it goes from Mini DisplayPort to Dual Link DVI and takes power over USB. In order to connect this to the dock, I'm then going to use this adapter here, which is Thunderbolt 3 or USB C to Mini DisplayPort. It's not Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 or anything, it's purely for DisplayPort, but I can plug that into that Thunderbolt 3 pass through, get Mini DisplayPort, and use this adapter to connect one of my monitors up. So I already had that adapter, but I had to buy a second one for my second monitor. So I gave in, couldn't be bothered trying, trying the cheap ones that weren't working properly, and spent 80 quid, which is ridiculous, but 80 quid on this one here from Club 3D. And this is a proper high-end adapter that should definitely work. So as you can see here, it's dual link DVI to full-size display port, and again USB for power. So 80 quid feels like a ridiculous amount of money to spend on an adapter, but it's definitely cheaper than getting a new monitor, so it'll do. And that'll go from one of my monitors into the, into the display port on the back of the TS3. So hopefully for other people, if you're running reasonably modern accessories, you shouldn't have this sort of issue because it's purely because of my older monitors. But this is what I'm having to use to connect mine up. But in the end, it should be a good end result. So now I've got all the hardware unboxed, I'm going to go and rearrange my desk, get this all connected up, and I'll come back and see the full setup and test the dock out. Okay, so I've got the dock all set up now and it actually works really well. So we'll take a look at the full setup later, but we can see it's sitting here under this little shelf that I have under my monitors, and it sits really neatly there. And it actually seems to like be quite stable, I was concerned standing vertically it might fall over, but it's completely stable, it's got a good bit of weight to it, so it definitely won't fall over plugging anything in or anything like that. My only complaint really is the fact that I have to plug the speakers in the front, which looks a bit stupid, but I do plan on getting better speakers at some point in the future that I'll probably get, I'll probably run over USB or use an external DAC with. So hopefully this will be more of a temporary problem. But yeah, so it sits really neatly there, hides nicely under the shelf, and the space grey colour is really nice and it matches things like my Magic Trackpad, which I'm going to be making another video of at some point, I've just not finished editing it. And like even the silver sort of grey speakers, the colour actually matches really well. It looks really neat down there. I tried with it standing horizontally as well as vertically, but I found when it was horizontal I could see a lot more of the cables out the back of it, where standing it vertically hides a lot of the cables so it looks a lot neater. That is as long as you don't look under the desk at the mess of cables connecting the monitors up. But overall it looks really good sitting there. So now let's take a look at it working. So here we have my desk set up, which is an IKEA Galant desk, with a pair of Hasro HZ27WB 1440p 27 inch monitors. The monitors are then connected to that CalDigit dock using those DisplayPort to Dual Link DVI adapters. In addition to that, we've then got my Philco Majest Touch keyboard, as well as an old Alienware wired mouse, which I don't use that much now I've got the Magic Trackpad, but I do use it sometimes. We've then got the Magic Trackpad, my Bose Companion 2 speaker is also hooked up to the dock, and then the dock is connected to my wired network over Ethernet, so the whole thing is wired into the network. So now we can try it out. So I've got my laptop here, my MacBook Pro. So you can put that on the stand here, which is a Griffin elevator, a Griffin, I can't remember what it's called, some sort of Griffin stand, it's fairly cheap. So you put the laptop there, take the single Thunderbolt 3 cable, plug it inside of the laptop, and as soon as we connect that, laptop starts charging, and then in a second everything will come up. There we go. So it takes a little second for the monitors to come on because of those adapters, but now it's fully connected up, we can use the machine not as normal. So now if I were to like open up a window for example, I could then open up the terminal and fully works across all the multiple monitors like normal and all the networks connected up and everything. So it works really well. And it's just so neat, it's such an elegant solution. So I can be working away on my laptop and then decide, right, I don't want to sit at the desk anymore, I want to go away, pull the single cable out, take the laptop away and now I've got a portable laptop again. It's just such an elegant setup. So much easier than connecting all those separate dongles to it and then unplugging them and reconnecting all of those. So overall, I'm really impressed with how convenient it is. Now let's do a quick benchmark of the SD card reader. According to CalDigit, this card reader can do up to UHS 2 speeds, which means it's really high performance. Unfortunately, the fastest SD card I have is only UHS 1, 95 megabytes a second. So I'd like to think it'll easily max out that card but it would just be good just to check that it is getting the full performance that I can out of that SD card, which will massively improve the performance for me ingesting video into the machine. So I've got the card in, and I'm just using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Do a wee test there. 
And yep, so we can see that it's writing at about 85 megabytes a second, so that's perfectly fine. And that finishes up, we'll see the read speed, which is the more important one. And yep, that's reading at 89.2 megabytes a second, so that's pretty much, that's so really close to the card rating 95 megabytes a second, and it's quite a cheap card. So yeah, that performs that SD card reader is really good. So as a final test, let's take a look at the performance of the network controller. So I've got it connected to my network over Ethernet, and as you can see up here in Network Utility, it's actually quite surprisingly got an Intel networking chipset. So this has an Intel i210 network controller, which is really unexpected. I was expecting this to have some sort of Broadcom or Realtek chipset, some sort of lower end cheaper chipset, but no, it's got a proper Intel network controller, which is really good. So it should be a really reliable, high performance controller. So that's brilliant to see. What I've then got it connected up to test it, is in this terminal window here, I've got iperf, iperf running as a server on my server next door. And then up here, we've got a terminal on the Mac with the iperf client. So what we'll do is we'll just run an iperf test between my laptop and the server, just to check I can definitely get the full gigabit speeds. So we can fire that test off there and see what sort of performance we get. So we've now got the results. And as we can see, iperf has reported the bandwidth to be 939 megabits a second. So we're fully getting gigabit speeds over the CalDigits Ethernet controller. So that confirms that the CalDigits Ethernet controller is getting us full gigabit speeds. Taking a look in system information also confirms that the Ethernet controller is definitely a PCI device and not some sort of dodgy USB device. You can see under Ethernet cards it shows up here and it's connected to the PCI bus. And if you look under the PCI information here, we can see that the Ethernet controller is showing up as a Thunderbolt PCI device. So it's definitely using a proper PCI Express based Ethernet controller and not some sort of USB one. Under USB devices, we can see a bit more information about how the USB side of things works with the dock. We can see that there's a couple of USB 3 buses showing up. One of them has the Thunderbolt 3 audio device connected to it, so that shows that the audio device built into the CalDigit dock runs over USB, but that's fine. You use a lot of USB DACs, they're fairly common, so that's not really a problem. And we've also got the card reader also connected to the USB 3 bus. There's then some USB 3.1 buses, some of these will be the ones built into the laptop, but this one down here, for example, is on the CalDigit because we can see we've got a USB 2 hub connected here, which I've plugged in to connect my keyboard, mouse, and webcam, just to free up some ports on the back of the device from plugging them all in directly. So we can see here that the dock provides both USB 3 and USB 3.1 buses and has some of the internal devices, such as the card reader and audio device, connected to the internal USB bus. So there you go. That was a look at the TS3 Plus Thunderbolt 3 dock from CalDigit. And overall, it works really well. It's so neat, it performs brilliantly, and it's just so convenient to be able to connect a single cable to my laptop and get everything connected up, including full gigabit ethernet, both my monitors, and all my other peripherals. It's definitely not the cheapest option in the world, and it would definitely be a lot cheaper just using basic dongles and plugging them all into the laptop. This is just so convenient, it's definitely well worth the money. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching.